Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is Chuck Hughes. It's great to be here today. Um, thank you, Tom, for setting this up. Um, I really enjoy these uh, educational uh, webinars, and uh, we started uh, a webinar last month uh, where I, I, I wanted to present two uh, strategies that are working well uh, this year, and we only got to finish uh, the first strategy. So uh, today we're going to look at the second strategy, and uh, the uh, in the current market environment, uh, we have kind of a new market reality. We have very slow economic growth, uh, lower corporate earnings, lower stock returns. Uh, the S and P's only returned. Uh, actually, it's had a minus return over the last 13 years and a slightly minus return over the last five years. We have high unemployment, uh, a lack of high-paying jobs and decreased job security, uh, lots of price swings with uh, little trend in the markets, and uh, we have a lower standard of living in a slow-growth environment. So um, I'm going to present the second of those two strategies that's that's working in this, in this type of environment. And... Uh, I've been trading for uh, over 28 years, so uh, I've seen a lot of different types of markets, and uh, this is generally a slow growth market, so you have to adapt your strategies to whatever the market's giving you. And um, over the last several years, I'm going to just show some uh, examples of price charts of the S&P 500 index over the last three years. And what these charts have in common is a lot of uh, price volatility and uh, very little trend. And that's, you know, that's the hand we were dealt with this market. Um, here's a snapshot from 2012, and you can see uh, a lot of price volatility here, but the index uh, virtually unchanged. Here's another example in 2011, again, Lots of price swings, uh, very little uh, trend, and the uh, index virtually unchanged over this uh, period of time. Here's 2010, uh, same type of scenario, uh, 2011, and the S&P in 2011 was actually unchanged for the year. Started the year at 1257, uh, ended the year at 1257, and this was a snapshot uh, that I took in July of 2012 over the previous year, uh, over the previous 12 months, and again, uh, a lot of price volatility. Uh, here's a, a more recent snapshot of the S&P. Uh, again, more price volatility uh, with uh, not a really strong trend either way and the index virtually unchanged. So that's the type of market environment we're in, and... Uh, uh, I wanted to present these two strategies that are doing well in this current market environment. And uh, those two strategies are the covered call strategy using both monthly options and weekly options. And uh, the second strategy that we're going to go into detail today is the what I call the super portfolio. And these are stocks that do well in a slow growth environment. And that's what we're focused on uh, this year. And um, I'm very actively trading these two strategies. Uh, and I took a snapshot a few days ago, and I have uh, currently have $340,000 in actual profits trading these two strategies at an average return of 54%. So uh, these are doing well uh, despite the current uh, market conditions. And um, I trade these two strategies in two of my retirement accounts. Here's a snapshot of the first uh, retirement account, and I have $254,000 in open trade profits. And these, this is the uh, stock portion of that portfolio. Here's the option uh, portion. And um, in this portfolio, I have uh, covered calls both monthly and weekly uh, covered calls, and I have uh, super portfolio stocks. Uh, so this account had, uh, when I took the snapshot, $254,000 actual profits. Here's a snapshot of 
my second retirement uh, account, and that has uh, eighty-six thousand dollars in actual profit. So, just wanted to show you that you know these are working in real time, and uh, have been doing well in this type of market environment. So, the uh, economic uncertainty has been keeping the market uh, from trending over the last several years. Uh, the eurozone debt crisis is entering its fourth year with no apparent solution. Uh, the U.S. national debt is top $16 trillion, and the U.S. and global economic growth has been uh, very slow. So um, let's just recap the uh, covered call strategy from that we presented last month, and uh, I just want to go through that quickly in case you didn't see that webinar. Um, but um, uh, I want to show you an example of a, uh, a covered call trade that I took recently, and this was for the uh, small cap ETF, symbol TNA. And uh, when I initiated this covered call, um, I bought the uh, TNA uh, ETF, and then I sold a uh, leaps call option. And what that allowed me to do was to purchase this small cap ETF at a 30% discount to its current price. And uh, with these covered calls, the um, call option that you sell profits if the price of the ETF decreases. So you're essentially setting up a spread here, and uh, the uh, call option profits if the price of the ETF goes down. And it also profits from the time decay of the short option. And... Uh, this covered call trade can profit if the price of the uh, underlying stock or ETF increases, remains flat, or even decreases. So um, in this particular example, um, this uh, ETF uh, provides downside protection because I bought it at a 30% discount. Uh, a small increase in the stock price uh would result in a 53% return for this particular trade. A flat ETF price would result in a 42% return, and a 20% decline in the ETF would result in a 14% return. And, of course, the uh, risk is limited to the cost of the trade, so this, this is an ideal strategy for uh, non-trending markets. And here's uh, an example of... Um, of that trade, that particular trade, and I bought uh, 400 shares of the small cap ETF at 51.22, and sold four of the 55 strike leaps options at 15.32. So here's a brokerage confirmation of that uh, trade that we're discussing. And what I did is I um, did a, did a covered call analysis on this trade, and uh, again, this this uh, uh, covered call uh, calculator will calculate the profit potential for this trade uh, based on changes in the uh, price of the ETF at option expiration. And in this example, we went from a 10% increase in the price of the ETF to a 20% decline in the price of the ETF. And this will calculate the uh, profit potential. And again, if the uh, ETF increases to percent, I get a 53% return. If uh, if the ETF remains flat, then I, I get a 42% return. And if, even if it decreases 20%, I still get a 14% return. So this is a great strategy for uh, any type of market, really. And what I did was uh, I contrasted this covered call strategy with an option purchase strategy. And what I did is I assumed that instead of selling that call option, that 55 strike at 15.32, uh, in this analysis, uh, I assumed I bought that option. Uh, in other words, I bought the uh, 55 strike call and I paid 15.32 for it. And at the time, uh, I made that covered call trade. The underlying ETF was trading at 51.22. So uh, here's an analysis of an option purchase as, as opposed to uh, selling the call. And you can see uh, with this analysis, uh, if TNA increases 10% uh, at option expiration, 
this option purchase would have a 91% loss. Uh, if uh, TNA uh, remains flat, it has a 100% loss. And if TNA decreases 20%, it has a 100% loss. So this just contrasts the difference between uh, buying an option and selling the option. So uh, these covered calls with 30% downside protection uh, can profit in any any type of uh, uh, market. And I noticed uh, in my covered call portfolio, in the big down days like we had yesterday, uh, the my por- covered call portfolio didn't decline as much because those short call options yesterday profited as the market went down. So uh, there's less uh, uh, volatility in your portfolio because you have uh, spreads on that um, have uh, the short option portion of that spread uh, profiting as the market goes down. And the other big advantage uh, of, of this type of spread trade is that you can hold these positions during volatile price swings or uh, wide price swings uh, without getting stopped out uh, like you would with, with an option purchase. So uh, a lot of advantages to uh, this, this type of strategy. So again, just to recap, uh, by selling the call, you, you become, in effect, you become the bank because when you sell that call, you're taking cash into your brokerage account. So in this type of market, you want to be the bank. In other words, you're collecting the cash into your account instead of paying the cash out to purchase that option. So, uh, again, if with the covered call, uh, if uh, TNA increases, we get a nice return, 53%. If it remains flat, we get a 42% return. And even if it decreases, we get a, uh, if it decreases 20%, we still realize a return versus, uh, uh, you know, heavy losses for that option purchase if, um, the TNA is flat, uh, or goes down in price, you would experience 100% loss. So I just wanted to review this strategy real quick. This is a great strategy, uh, in this type of market. And, um, this covered call strategy uh, has produced uh, over $1.1 million in real-time profits over the last three years. And uh, I'll just quickly show you my uh, retirement accounts, uh, profit loss reports with these uh, covered call trades in, in the portfolio. And they show over $1.1 million in uh, actual profits uh, over the past uh, three years. And this was during a very volatile, non-trending type market conditions. And uh, so th- these real-time results demonstrate, you know, the ability of this covered call strategy to uh, deliver uh, excellent returns uh, despite difficult uh, market conditions. So um, can, I, can I ask a question for you? Yeah. Uh, I, I know that you have a very diversified product line within your portfolios, including the IRAs, um, due to the market volatility and some of the economic uh, negatives that you had mentioned earlier in the presentation, have you found that it's better suited for yourself to start allocating more assets to a strategy such as a covered call from an example like pulling a little more of your percentages from naked options, or do you tend to stick with your strategies moving forward through the market variations? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Uh, how do you allocate your funds in this in this type of market environment? And uh, I uh, have a small portion of my uh, re- retirement accounts in the option purchase strategy, and uh, but I have the, the vast majority in uh, the uh, covered call type trades. So uh, I just found that there's. There's less volatility in the uh, profit flow, if you will, and uh, the uh, covered calls are just, you you can sleep better at night (laughs) with these covered calls, and uh, you're not going to get stopped out as quick as if if you um, purchase uh, an option, and uh, these have a lot of downside protection, so I allocate most of my funds to um, this this covered call uh, strategy because... 
it, it really can work uh, in just about any type of uh, market environment. And I'm going to show you some examples of uh, weekly covered calls, and they uh, started trading weekly options several years ago, and as soon as I, I heard about weekly options, uh, you know, a light went off. I said, boy, that's, that's, a, that's a great chance to uh, generate weekly income by selling uh, covered calls. And uh, with, with the weekly options, of course, you get to roll over these covered calls 52 times a year. So it could be a great source of uh, income. And uh, in, in my portfolio, I, I uh, allocate about 50% of my covered call portfolios to the weekly options and about 50% to the monthly options. So uh, the weekly options, uh, th th that's a very uh, lucrative strategy. And uh, because you get to sell option premiums so many times during the course of the year, so uh, that can generate uh, a big cash on cash return over the course of the year. And uh, I've been taking advantage, advantage of that the last uh, several years. And I'll show you an example here. Uh, here's an example of a weekly covered call. This is actually on the same uh, TNA uh, ETF, the small cap ETF. And what I do is I own the uh, TNA, and then each week I'll uh, roll out of the uh, call option that's expiring and then sell the new call option. Um, as a matter of fact, I did that today, um, and I rolled out of my uh, short calls on uh, TNA because they had very little time premium left, and then I went ahead and sold the uh, March 1st uh, weekly call, which expires uh, uh, a week from tomorrow. So here's an example. Each week, this is a typical um, example of how I roll these uh, weekly call options over, and um, this is an example of an actual uh, trade spread trade that I put in to roll over. This was from the November 30th uh, calls to the November 30th, so uh, November 23rd calls to the November 30th, so I closed out the weekly November 23rd and then sold the open November 30th, so I do this each week. Um, and uh, it's been working out really well. Here's an example of my fill for that uh, particular um, uh, spread trade, and I was able to sell uh, eight of the uh, November 30th weekly calls at 142 or $142 per uh, contract. And uh, that was uh, with uh, the TNA at the time trading at 54.27. Uh, by selling the uh, 54 and a half strike, uh, that was a uh, at the money uh, strike, and uh, options lose all uh, of their time value at option expiration. So, if I sell a weekly call option, and in this case it had uh, 1.42 points of time value uh, at option expiration in a week. That time, to back, that time value decays to zero. And if I'm short that option, that becomes profit uh, one week later, uh, regardless of the uh, price movement of the underlying uh, stock or ETF. So as an example, uh, that particular covered call, uh, if you were to initiate it on uh, the day that I did the rollover, now I already owned it, so I did a rollover, but if you were to purchase the TNA, at the 54.27, and then sell um, the option at 1.42. Uh, a thousand or uh, 100 shares would have cost $5,285. So, to initiate that covered call on that day. Now, let's just assume that each week I was able to get a similar premium. Well, over the course of a year, I could generate uh, 7,000. $384 in uh, cash received into my account, uh, and if I have a $5,285 investment, uh, we're talking about 139% potential cash-on-cash -cash return every year. So 
uh, even if the underlying stock declines substantially, uh, I still have the potential to receive a great return if I'm getting 139% cash-on-cash return by selling these weekly uh, call options. So um, a lot can go wrong with this trade uh, and this weekly covered call, and you're still going to profit. Uh, when you receive a 139% cash-on-cash return, uh, if the underlying ETF or stock declines substantially, you can still profit. Uh, if you had bad timing when you first entered the trade, you could still profit. So uh, a lot can go wrong with this strategy, and you're still going to be profitable after a year. Um, you could have volatile price swings in the underlying stock or ETF. Uh, you could still profit. So this gives this weekly covered call strategy a big advantage over a stock or option purchase strategy um, directional trade. So um, they, you know, if you purchase a stock or option, it has to, uh, the, the, the stock or ETF has to move in the right direction uh, in order for you to profit. But with these covered calls, the, the uh, ETF could easily actually go down and you could still profit. So this is a big advantage over directional trades. Okay, let's uh, switch to our second uh, strategy that's doing well in this current market environment, and that's the uh, super portfolio strategy. And uh, to select super portfolio stocks, um, I use uh, technical analysis. I call it prime trade select. So I have technical indicators uh, that help me uh, select the stocks and options with the best uh, profit potential. And I also use uh, fundamental analysis because we want to buy those stocks that uh, or those companies that are still doing well in a slow growth environment. So this can give you an edge when you're uh, purchasing a stock or an option on a stock if you do this fundamental analysis and find out which companies are still um, doing well in a slow growth environment uh, and then combine it with the technical analysis and uh, that's been working real well and uh, has enabled me to uh, find those stocks that do well uh, in the current market environment. So the uh, prime trade select uh, technical indicators, there's, there's three indicators, there's three steps that we use. Uh, step one is to determine the price trend and the buying pressure. Uh, step two is to confirm the price trend and determine the extent of that buying or selling pressure and isolate the very best profit opportunities. And step three is to uh, select an entry point. So uh, in step one of prime trade select, uh, we use a trend following system to determine the price trend. And uh, with trend following, I've been using this for 28 years, and um, the goal is to quantitatively measure the buying and selling pressure of the stock. And uh, this allows us to follow the trend instead of trying to predict where the trend's going. And we're using a mechanical system instead of using emotional uh, decision-making. So there's a lot of advantages to uh, system trading, and I've used the same basic uh, trend-following system for many years. So that's step one, and what what I use is uh, I use daily price charts to determine the price trend, and I use the 50-day uh, exponential moving average in relation to the 100-day uh, EMA, and if the 50-day EMA is above the 100-day EMA, that stock or ETF is on a buy signal, and if the 50-day EMA is below the 100-day EMA, then that stock or ETF is on a sell signal. And here's an example. Um, this is a daily price chart for Apple. And uh, this blue line right here is the 50-day EMA. The red line is the 100-day EMA. So we can see in, uh, back in April uh, the 50-day uh, EMA crossed above the 100-day EMA. So now Apple stock was on a buy signal and the trend was up. So we're following the trend with these trend-following systems. And as long as that 
uh, 50-day EMA uh, remains above the 100-day EMA, then uh, the stock is on a buy signal. And here's an example of uh, a sell signal. This was for uh, Merck stock, and we can see right we can see right here the 50-day EMA crossed below the 100-day EMA. So at that point, Merck was on a sell signal. So that's the first uh, step in our technical analysis. And um, I was actually able to do historical results uh, based on this 50, 100-day EMA system. And uh, I, because it's a rule-based system, you can do this historical testing. So uh, I tested the system over a 24-year period. And uh, the uh, what I did is I calculated the uh, in this column the cost to buy 100 shares of each of these stocks in the left-hand column uh, during the first buy signal. So uh, to purchase 100 shares of these stocks, the total cost was $8,204. And over the course of 24 years, um, the uh, profit on this $8,204 investment was $210,000. So um, a really good uh, return and uh that led to a total return of about uh, 2,567%, and that averages out to about 100% year in uh, historical uh, testing, the uh, historical return. So um, the system's done uh, well over long periods of time, and um, it's uh, when you look at these price charts, it gives you an instant picture of whether you should be buying or selling the, the stock. So uh, this is a great tool, to, uh, first step in your process. You want to make sure that the price trend is up, and you simply want to follow the price trend. And uh, you can download these uh, 50 and 100-day EMA lines easily on uh, stockcharts.com. There's a, a lot of financial websites that will allow you to uh, download the uh, 50 and 100-day EMA. So... Again, it gives you an instant picture of whether you should be buying or selling a stock. And uh, I've been uh, using this trend following uh, system for uh, about 20, uh, actually more than 28 years now. And uh, I started with a $4,600 trading account. And within my first two years, I made uh, over $460,000 in actual profit. So... These are just copies of my uh, Schedule D for those first two years. And uh, starting with a $4,600 account, using this basic trend system, um, I made over $460,000 in actual profits. And this, this was uh, mostly from option trading, uh, stock options. And I've also used this same system many times in the uh, International Trading Championship and I was able to uh, have seven first-place finishes and a couple uh, second- and third-place finishes. Chuck, uh, third place? Third yeah. place? What third happened place. there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, I was slipping. <laughs> um, so I be, I'm not trying to brag, but I just want to show everybody that this, this, trend, this basic trend-following systems had a long history of profitability. Um, Okay, step two of our three-step technical process is we want to confirm the price trend. On any given day, you, you could have hundreds of stocks that are on a buy signal with the 50-day EMA above the 100-day EMA. So what we want to do is we want to narrow that list down to the best profit opportunity. So what we do uh, in step two is we confirm the price trend and uh, that enables us to find the very best stocks. And uh, one of the trend confirmation indicators I like to use is on-balance volume. And uh, the on-balance volume indicator measures volume flow, and uh, it does that with a simple, uh, easy-to-read line. I'll show you an example of that. And volume flow precedes price movement and helps sustain the trend. So you want to you take a peek at how 
what, what the volume, volume flow is for a stock just to see if that uh, upward price trend can be sustained. And the way this uh, unbalanced volume line is calculated is when a stock closes up, volume is uh, added to the line. And when a stock closes down for the day, volume is subtracted from the line. So a cumulative total of these additions and subtractions uh, form the OBV line. And here's an example of it, uh, the OBV line. Uh, the top part of this chart is uh, the daily uh, price movement here of Apple. And uh, the lower uh, chart here is the OBV line for this time period. And we simply want to see this line, the OBV line, sloping up. Uh, the actual numerical value of the indicator is not that important. We simply want to see this uh, OBV line sloping up, and that confirms the price uptrend. So when we have an upsloping OBV line, volume's heavier on days that a stock closes up, and volume is lighter on days the stock closes down. And it's an indication that the buying pressure is exceeding the selling pressure. And that volume flow helps sustain the price uptrend. And um, another confirming indicator I like to use is the new 52-week high list. And stocks that, are, that make a new 52-week high are in a very powerful uptrend, and they tend to continue uh, with the price uptrend. So uh, I like to focus on stocks that have uh, an upsloping on balance volume line and also uh, are making a series of new 52-week highs. And in my trading experience, I discovered uh, that stocks that are making these new 52-week highs, they tend to continue the price uptrend, and it allows us to confirm that price uptrend. And this allows us to further narrow down that list to the stocks with the best uh, profit potential. So the stocks that are included in the new 52-week high list represent the very best profit opportunities out there. Uh, plain and simple, a stock does not make this list unless it's in a very uh, powerful uptrend. And here's uh, another example uh, of Apple stock, uh, top uh, chart is the uh, daily uh, price movement of Apple stock, and we can see the uh, it's making a series of new 52-week highs. So that's a confirming price uh, indicator, confirming trend indicator. We can see the 50-day EMA is above the 100-day EMA, and the fact that the uh, stock is making a new series of 52-week highs confirms that price trend, and we have further confirmation with an upsloping on balance volume line. And here's an example. This uh, uh, The new 52-week high list can be easily downloaded from barchart.com. And here's an example of uh, the 52-week uh, high list for the day that I took this uh, snapshot. So here's some recent examples of Prime Trade Select steps one and two, and this is an example for uh, Discover Financial Services. Uh, we can see that the um, stock is making a series of new 52-week highs. Uh, the 50-day EMA, the blue line here, is above the 100-day, and we have an upsloping on balance volume line. Here's another example. This is for Home Depot. Um, again, we have uh, the stock making a series of new 52-week highs, uh, confirming the price trend, and we have a further confirmation with an upsloping uh, on-balance volume line. Here's one more example. This is for Visa. And uh, again, we have uh, uh, the, the uh, price trend up. The 50-day uh, EMA is above the 100-day EMA making a series of new 52-week highs and an upsloping unbalanced volume line. So uh, step three in our three-step technical analysis is selecting uh, an entry point, and obviously this is a very important part of the process. And 
I found over time that the, uh, the, that the best way to select an optimum entry is to use the uh, Keltner channels. And uh, the uh, Keltner channels were developed by Chester Keltner, and they can help us uh, time our trade entry and exit points. Um, and they also provide uh, high probability buy and sell signals. Uh, they can also be used to help us select option strike prices and also allows us to select stocks with repetitive and predictive price patterns. And I'll show you some examples of that here in a minute. Uh, so the uh, Keltner channels, uh, there's three channels. There's the uh, upper channel, which is the, uh, the line, this line right here. Uh, the middle channel is the dotted line right here. And then we have the lower channel. And then we have uh, these channels uh, that overlay the daily price movement of the stock. And they basically uh, act as overbought, oversold indicators. And, of course, when we want to enter a long position, whether it's a stock or an option, uh, we want to wait till the stock retraces a little bit and uh, pulls back before we uh, enter our trade. And if you do that, you're going to have a higher probability of success. And you don't want to buy when the stock becomes overbought. And when the stock gets near the upper channel or, or even trades above the upper channel, then it's becoming overbought. Here's an example where it became overbought, retraced, overbought, retraced, overbought, retraced. So you don't want to buy, obviously, when the stock is trading near the upper channel. You want to buy when the stock is trading near the middle or the lower channel. And uh, the way this, uh, on, uh, the way this, uh, these Keltner channels are uh, calculated is the, the upper and lower channels are two times the average true range of the past 10 days, and they're drawn at equal distance from the central line. And the central line, the dotted line, is the 20-day uh, uh, EMA average. So we have the 20-day uh, EMA, which is the dotted line, and then the upper channel is two times the average true range over the past 10 days, and uh, also the lower channel is two times the average true range. So it's drawn on each side of that 20-day EMA. So that's how the uh, Keltner channels are calculated, and it's a great tool to help you um, enter it in exit trades. So again, uh, you don't want to buy when uh, the stock is trading near the upper channel. You want to wait till it retraces towards the middle or the lower uh, channel. And uh, what I did in this uh, price chart, this is a price chart for uh, Apple stock. And uh, the, 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 uh, this top table here shows actual uh, trades that I made uh, purchasing Apple stock. This was a, around the uh, $200 range uh, when Apple was trading at $200. Uh, and what I did is I used the Keltner channels to help me time uh, these uh, entries. And... The uh, trade confirmation here shows the date that I bought the stock, the number of shares, and the price that I paid. And uh, then what I did was, uh, for these uh, actual trades that I took, in the bottom uh, chart here, I circled the day that I made these trades. And uh, so that gives you an idea of how I use these uh, Keltner channels to help me time my entry. So you can see... Uh, on each of these, once I purchased the stock, it was trading down towards the middle or lower channel, and that gave me uh, a higher probability of success that that trade's going to work out because the stock is becoming oversold. So you can see with each of these three trades that uh, the stock really didn't retrace very much from my buy point. So uh, this enabled me to select uh, low-risk buy points uh, and uh, 
it's, it's a very useful tool. And in, in this case, I, uh, I bought st uh, the stock around the $200 level. So great timing indicator uh, when to enter uh, a trade. And one of the other uses of, of the Keltner channels is it allows you to focus on stocks that have a repetitive and predictive price pattern uh, rather than a stock that's all over the place as far as uh, the price pattern. And here's an example. Um, the top chart here is TJX. Uh, that's one of the uh, super portfolio stocks that I own. And you can see uh, it has a very repetitive price pattern. Um, it, when it gets overbought, it gets up near the upper channel. You can see that it retraces to the middle channel and a uh, very predictable price pattern. So I'd much rather trade TJX than uh, Mosaic, where uh, you have a series of uh, uptrends and downtrends, but no real clear trend. And, you know, you can get pretty chopped up if you're trading uh, a stock like this. If you're taking a directional trade in Mosaic, whether you're buying a stock or you're buying an option, with this kind of price movement, why trade this this uh, stock when you can trade this stock. So that's another uh, great use for these uh, Keltner channels. Uh, they help us find <clears throat> stocks with uh, repetitive and predictive uh, price patterns. Here's another example. This is for Sherwin-Williams. Sherwin this is another super portfolio stock that I own. And again, you can see uh, very repetitive price patterns uh, for Sherwin-Williams. And uh, the uh, lower uh, chart here is for Freeport Macmoran. And again, you can see real, some really volatile price moves, no clear trend. So um, I'd, I'd much rather trade these, these stocks that are very uh, repetitive and predictive. Here's one more example. This is for uh, Disney uh, versus uh, Potash. So... Um, I like to focus on this type of a stock with a uh, repetitive price pattern. So now let's talk about uh, the uh, fundament fundamental analysis we do on these super portfolio stocks. We just look at the three-step technical analysis. Now we'll look at the fundamental analysis. And um, what we look for in these super portfolio stocks, first of all, they're in a confirm price uptrend, and they meet the criteria of prime trade select. And then uh, we also like to focus on stocks that have little or no correlation to the European economies and, and debt crisis. And we like to focus on stocks that are not dependent on the price of oil or, or commodities uh, in this type of deflationary environment. So uh, we like to focus on stocks that aren't dependent on commodities or the price of oil. And I like to focus on uh, companies that have strong dividend, equity, uh, revenue, and retained earnings growth uh, despite the slow-growing U.S. economy. So we look for stocks that are still growing in this uh, slow-growth environment. And uh, we also like to focus on stocks that pay a dividend, which can act as a floor in market uh, during market corrections. So we're basically trying to find stocks that are still that still have strong growth rates, fundamental growth rates in either uh, their dividends, uh, equity, revenue, or retained earnings, uh, despite the uh, slow-growing uh, U.S. economy. So this gives us an edge. Uh, in our uh, analysis and picking stocks that have the best uh, profit potential. And so, Chuck, the, I don't mean to interrupt you, but the super portfolio sounds like you have a both a quantitative and qualitative aspect to the super portfolio. You're just not jumping into Keltner channels. You're looking at fundamentals as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the uh, Keltner channels is step three of the technical analysis, and then once we get uh, step one, two, and three uh, accomplished with the technical analysis, then we also want to look at the fundamentals for that company, too, and this can give us a real edge in this slow-growth environment. So we're, we're picking stocks that are not only technically sound, but fundamentally sound, and 
this has given us a real big advantage over the last uh, several years in this type of uh, market environment. So let's look at an example of a super portfolio stock. In this example, we're going to use uh, TJX. Uh, it's in a confirmed uh, price uptrend. Um, the, uh, TJX is uh, the company that owns Marshalls and TJ Maxx uh, stores and home goods. So um, this, uh, this company has uh, little correlation to the European debt crisis. It's not dependent on the price of oil or commodities in this deflationary environment. Uh, TJX has strong equity and retained earnings growth rates uh, despite the slow-growing U.S. economy, and uh, TJX pays a dividend. So that would be an example of a company that uh, has good fundamentals for the uh, current market environment. And uh, I have about $79,000 in open trade profits for TJX stock. And this is just showing you um, uh, my open trade profits uh, in my portfolio. I just took a snapshot recently of the portfolio. And uh, th these are my two retirement accounts, uh, account one and account two. And uh, when I took the snapshot, I had a $79,000 open trade profit for TJX. So... Um, what I did is I uh, calculated my um, super portfolio results uh, over the last several years, and uh, in my stock portfolios, I had uh, over $1.5 million in profits. In, in my uh, option purchase portfolios, I had over $1.8 million in profits uh, for these super portfolio stocks. And I'm just going to run through my brokerage account statements real quick. This is for the, uh, the stock portfolios. And again, that, that had uh, uh, over $1.5 million in profits uh, in the stock portfolios. Uh, average return of 28.9%, uh, 113 winning trades, no losing trades. And uh, here's the first snapshot of a portfolio. Uh, I, in this particular one, I had $143,000 in profits, average return of 30%. Um, and I'll just run through these stock portfolios uh, fairly quickly here. Um, this one had $41,000 in profits. Okay, and let's just look at... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Regarding the, the options, et cetera, and, and the profits are great, what, what would you say to clients that are now going to implement this new specific strategy, which are obviously showing you a nice profit, that have been down in the dumps, perhaps they've had a losing year? Um, what kind of advice would you give to them regarding these strategies and how to start and maybe proceed going forward? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good question. Uh, a lot of people are in that situation and uh you know depending on your uh risk tolerance uh, i would you know i would allocate uh most of my friends uh, most of my uh funds to the uh covered call strategy and then uh, a smaller portion of those funds and i would divide it up maybe equally between the super portfolio stocks and um, options on super portfolio stocks so Let's say uh, you dedicated 70% of your funds to um, covered calls, then maybe dedicate another 15% to super portfolio stocks and another 15% to uh, super portfolio options. So depending on your risk tolerance, you know, that percentage could change. You may want to have just 50% in covered calls and then 50% in these uh, super portfolio stocks and options. So, uh I would get with with Tom and just you know just go over your your risk tolerance and your goals and you know set up a percentage for each of these uh, portfolios that that you're comfortable with. And I'll just run through my uh, option profits real quick. This uh, again, there was over 1.8 million dollars in profits in uh, option purchases and average return of 85 percent. 
uh, 183 wins, 17 losers, uh, so just over 90% um, accuracy. Uh, this is actually a, a trade monster account here. Uh, had an average return in this uh, account of 198%. Uh, so I'll just run. Here's uh, uh, in this portfolio, this snapshot, I had $254,000 in uh, profits and average return of 114%. Uh, and uh, 147000 $147,000 in profits in this account, uh, $341,000 in these two accounts. And, uh, again, this, this totaled up to about uh, $1.8 million in profits for the option purchase strategy uh, using our um, technical and fundamental analysis. Okay, so that uh, concludes uh, today's presentation on uh, we recap the uh, covered call strategy and uh, we went into some detail on the uh, super portfolio. And uh, in my weekly option advisory, um, we uh, trade covered calls and we also have uh, a portfolio uh, for the super super portfolio stocks. So uh, if you want to get an updated profit performance for these uh, portfolios, you can just log on to uh, weeklyoptionalert.com uh, or you can call Brad uh, toll-free. And uh, if you log on to the website and click trade results, we, we list the uh, current profit results for these various uh, portfolios. And uh, the uh, portfolios have been performing well uh, in this type of market environment. And um, we just maintain our discipline each week uh, with the covered calls. We roll those over every week. Um, and uh, it's, it's been working out uh, real well with us. And uh, the super portfolio has also been performing very well. So, uh, I'd be glad to take any uh, questions at this point that you might have concerning the covered calls or super portfolio. One question, Chuck. Uh, do you ever use leaps for covered calls? Yes. Uh, that, yes. Uh, question is, do I use leaps options? And that, ex that first example that I showed you uh, where I bought the small cap ETF at a 30% discount to its current price, that was a leaps option. So you can get some really uh, fat premiums with those uh, leaps options. And uh, you saw with that uh, trade example that um, if that uh, ETF remains flat at option expiration, I was going to realize over a 42% return even if the <laughs> ETF was flat. So think about that for a second. In this type of market environment, if, if the stock is flat or the ETF is flat and you're going to collect a 42% return, you know, that's a, that's a huge advantage over, you know, probably most other strategies. And, again, that was using a LEAPS option. So the, the large premium with that LEAPS option uh, enabled me to get those kind of results where if uh, the ETF was flat, I still get a 42% return. If it's down 20%, I still got a 14% return. So that was an example of using a leaps option for these covered calls. Another question for you from John Laney. He's asking, uh, with all the stuff that's going on, the geopolitical concerns, the Washington deficit cliff, uh, sequestration, worries, do, do any of these affect your trades, or do you bypass this, Chuck, stick with your discipline and stick with domestic companies that don't have overseas exposure? Uh, yes, that's, that's a great question because um, in this current market environment, it's really difficult to predict where the market's going. And a lot of times, um, you know, the, the market won't go in the way you thought it was going to go <laughs> based on the the macroeconomic picture uh, with the sequestration. For example, um, 
even though it looks like this sequestration is going to definitely happen, the defense stocks have been making new highs, and they're going to be the hard, you know, one of the hardest hit groups in the sequestration. So it's really hard to predict where any stock is going to go in the future. So I just maintain my discipline, and if you can get 130% cash on cash return over the course of a year with these weekly covered calls, then you're way ahead of the game and you don't even have to be concerned with these daily um, and um, monthly uh, geopolitical issues and sequestration and the uh, fiscal cliff and the European debt crisis. So I, I just maintain, maintain my discipline and uh, that's enabled us to do very well. So I just found it's very hard to uh, predict where any trend is going, and so I simply follow my indicators, and uh, that that's you know kept me out of trouble and it's done very well, uh, uh, regardless of what the market condition is. So um, we like to just uh, stick to our systems and our indicators. We just follow it along, and I really don't pay that much attention to uh, what I think the market's going to do based on the macro uh, economic picture, because it's, it's just really hard to uh, predict what's going to happen. La last question for you, Chuck, before we let you go. Uh, some of the clients are commenting that they notice that you do a lot of these covered calls in the super portfolio and the IRA. Um, by nature, they're a little more conservative. Do you tend to speculate with your option spreads and your naked options in individual accounts or non-IRAs, or is just just kind of how it is, or that is that a method to your madness? Um, the uh, option spreads, of course, um, most retirement accounts you can't you cannot trade uh, option spreads, uh, so those those would have to be done in a regular. Uh, individual or joint brokerage account. Uh, of course, the uh, super portfolio and uh, the covered calls uh, can be traded in most uh, retirement accounts. So uh, they're, they're considered uh, uh, lower risk. And, oh, and option purchases also, uh, a lot of times you can do those in retirement accounts. So uh, in, if, if, if you're looking at using your retirement funds, you, you can uh, certainly buy the super portfolio stocks and you can do covered calls in almost any retirement account. And then uh, with some brokerage houses, you can do the option purchase. Uh, but uh, the option spreads, for the most part, uh, have to be done in a non-retirement uh, account. 